everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Thanksgiving is coming. In fact, it's coming pretty soon here for us in Canada. It's only a couple of weeks away. And earlier this week, one of our channel family members, Wynn, suggested that we crochet a cornucopia. I especially liked this idea because I love to decorate a table for whenever we have a bit of a dinner party. And I don't have a cornucopia basket. <laughs> so we thought it would be a lot of fun to crochet a small little cornucopia that you could use as a bit of autumn decor as a centerpiece for your table when Thanksgiving comes. Chances are you really only think about cornucopias around Thanksgiving. And that got me wondering what the history of them was. A cornucopia also translates as horn of plenty. The word cornucopia is from the Latin, cornu meaning horn and copia meaning plenty. So horn of plenty. It's typically a horn shaped basket from which all sorts of fruits and vegetables come tumbling out and it's supposed to symbolize a lot of plentiful bounty or a really good harvest, which is how it came to be associated with Thanksgiving. For today's pattern, I used a wool blend. You don't have to though, because this is a decorative piece. So you can use any kind of stiff, acrylic or cotton blend or wool blend that you have lying around that you feel embodies the colors of a cornucopia or maybe looks a little bit basket-like. I've blended two colors together and we'll get into that in the tutorial. Also, if you like our little pumpkins <laughs> and you like the little festive table runner that we had in some of the photographs earlier, we'll make sure we've got links to all of those tutorials in the description box down below so you can check those out as well if you plan on doing some pretty decorating for Thanksgiving this year. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a cornucopia together. Our cornucopias are a two strands held together project. So I've got a nice harvest gold and a nice light brown color here. I'm using a wool blend today, but you can use a very stiff sort of itchy acrylic if you've got it. What we're going for is a nice stiff fabric that wants to stand up by itself. Each of these skeins is 113 grams or 215 yards each. I won't be using the whole thing, but I want you to know what I'm starting with. You are also going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using today is a size 6 millimeter, also known as a J or a 10 in the US, a size 4 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to be holding two strands together throughout this project. So you're going to treat both of these strands as a single strand of yarn. So try to keep that in mind while you're crocheting. And you also want to work on a nice tight tension for this. So the tighter you're stitching the better because you want to have a nice stiff fabric. We're going to start at the pointy end of our cornucopia. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And once you've chained one to secure your circle, we're going to work six single crochet into our cinch circle. You're going to work those single crochet stitches over top of your short tail. If you're new to using two strands of yarn held together, just take your time. It might take a little bit of getting used to. Once you have six single crochet holding both strands together, worked into your cinch circle, grab both those little tails and carefully cinch shut your circles so that you've got a nice tight center. You can leave your tails to the back or work over top of them like I'm going to. We're going to begin row two as an increase row. So we're going to go from a stitch count of six in row one to a stitch count of nine at the end of row two. We're working in the round, so we're not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We're just going to work the first stitch of every row into the first stitch of the row before. So that's row one, stitch one. We're going to work directly into that to begin row two. So two single crochet into the same stitch to begin row two. Make sure you're still grabbing both of those tails as you crochet treating them both as a single big strand of yarn. One single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that twice more. 
two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet. You'll have nine stitches at the end of row two. I have to say this reminds me of chocolate and caramel as I'm working here. <laughs> At the end of row two, you've got nine stitches all the way around. And now we're gonna work two rows of single crochet. From here on out, we're just counting. If you need stitch markers to sort of mark the first or last stitch of each row, just to kind of help keep you centered as you're working so you know where your row ends or where your row began, go ahead and use stitch markers. Um, if you have trouble seeing where rows, row one turns into row two, then you might wanna mark sort of the first or last stitch of row one, just to kind of keep an eye on that. That, however you want to do it to make working in the round easier for you. Uh, for me, I tend to just count. So for example, there's nine stitches at the end of row two. We want to work two more rows of just straight single crochet. So I'm going to count to nine twice and that's how I know I've done two solid rows of just straight single crochet and that will bring me up to the end of row four. At the end of row four, we'll still have nine stitches and something that looks like this. As you work around and around working this little increase pattern, you're going to notice that your last stitch always ends up a little bit further back every single row from where our little start point is. So don't worry, because that's quite natural. And we're going to even everything up at the end of the pattern. So for now, just keep track of where your rows begin and end, and you want to keep track of the number of stitches in each row. So at the end of row four, we're up to nine stitches. We're going to do an increase row now for row five, and we're going to go from nine to 12 stitches. So we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch for row five. And remember, you're still holding both of those strands of yarn together. So that's two single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern twice more. So two, one, one, two, one, one. And we'll go from nine to 12 stitches. At the end of row five, we're up to 12 stitches. We're going to work two rows of just straight single crochet now. So you can continue to move your stitch markers to keep track of the beginning or ends of your rows or count to 12 twice and you know that you've worked row six and row seven in total. At the end of row seven, you should still have 12 stitches. We've got a little something that looks like this now. Row nine, or I should say row eight, is an increase row. So we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch to start. And a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern three times in total. And you'll have 15 stitches at the end of row eight. At the end of row eight, we're up to 15 stitches. We wanna do two rows now of just straight single crochet. So rows nine and 10, you're just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. You can move your stitch markers or count to 15 twice. At the end of row 10, we have 15 stitches. Row 11 is another increase row. We're gonna work two single crochet into the first stitch. and a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. You're gonna repeat that three times in total and we'll move from 15 stitches up to 18 stitches. For rows 12 and 13, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around. I hope you can see the pattern that's forming now. So at the end of row 11, we're up to 18 stitches just two straight rows of single crochet now, so you can move your stitch markers or count to 18 twice. At the end of row 13, we should have 18 stitches and a little something that looks like a cone or the beginning of a horn. We want to change the increasing pattern now. So we want to make it sort of start to flare out a little bit. So we're going to change the increasing pattern a little bit. We're still increasing every third row, but we want to uh, tighten up the increases. So we're going to begin row 14 with two single crochet into the first stitch. At 
and then single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one. You're going to repeat that little pattern six times in total and that will bring us from an 18 stitch count up to 24. At the end of row 14, we're up to 24 stitches now. So we did sort of a bit of a jog in our increasing pattern because we want to start flaring out our cornucopia. But we're still going to do two rows of straight single crochet now. So rows 15 and 16, you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Continue to move your stitch marker or just count to 24 twice. At the end of row 16, you should still have 24 stitches and we're going to increase again now using a sort of, we're going back to the original pattern a little bit, but we're still doing more increases in each row. So for row 17, we're going to begin with two single crochet into the first stitch. And a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So two, one, one, one. You're going to repeat that six times in total and you'll have 30 stitches at the end of this row. At the end of row 17, we're up to 30 stitches. We're going to do two rows of just straight single crochet now. So rows 18 and 19, you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can move your stitch markers or just count to 30 twice. At the end of row 19, we should be up to 30 stitches. We're going to continue with the increase pattern now, but we're going to ratchet it back again and do more increases in one row. So we're going to go back to the two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So we're gonna go back to that little pattern, but we're gonna do that 10 times in total. And that's gonna bring our stitch count from 30 up to 40. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. You'll repeat that 10 times in total all the way around. And at the end of this row, we'll be up to 40 stitches. At the end of row 20, we're up to 40 stitches. So 40 stitches all the way around. For rows 21 and 22, we're going to just single crochet in each stitch. So you can move your stitch markers or just count to 40 twice and you'll know you've done two more rows of single crochet. At the end of row 22, we're up to 40 stitches. We're going to continue to increase in row 23. So we're gonna work two single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So two, one, one, one. So that little pattern, you're gonna repeat 10 times in total, and we'll move from a stitch count of 40 up to a stitch count of 50. So once again, two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet once into each of the next three stitches, repeat that 10 times in total, and we'll be up to 50 stitches. At the end of row 23, we're up to 50 stitches, you should definitely be seeing sort of a big opening of a horn look <laughs> happening here. We're going to do two rows now of just straight single crochet. So rows 24 and 25. You're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can move your stitch markers or just count to 50 twice. At the end of row 25, we're up to 50 stitches. That's five zero all the way around. We're going to increase in row six. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. And a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that 10 times in total, and we'll be up to 60 stitches at the end of this row.
At the end of row 26, we're up to 60 stitches. We're going to work two rows of single crochet now. Rows 27 and 28. You can just work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Move your stitch markers or just count to 60 twice. At the end of row 28, we still have 60 stitches. We've got quite a great big loud horn thing looking here now. <laughs> we want to do one more row of increase and then we're going to build out the top of our cornucopia basket a bit. So for row 29, we're going to go back to a familiar little repeater. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one, that little familiar pattern. You're gonna repeat that 20 times in total. And we're gonna go from a stitch count of 60 all the way up to a stitch count of 80. At the end of row 29, we're up to 80 stitches. So 80 stitches all the way around. That's quite a big mouth now to our big horn. We're going to work four rows of just straight single crochet now. So rows 30 through 34. You're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can continue to move your stitch markers or count to 80 four times. So you're really getting a counting workout today. <laughs> At the end of row 34, we're up to 80 stitches. We've got a real kind of <laughs> elongated horn, real cornucopia look going now. We're going to switch. We're not going to finish the row with a slip stitch. We're just going to start directly into the first stitch of the previous row, just like we would every other row. But we're going to switch to the double crochet stitch now. So again, you can move your stitch marker to mark this last stitch of your last row. Um, and we're going to work a double crochet now into each stitch all the way around. So again, try to keep your stitches nice and tight. We're doing sort of a, a little edge around the outside of our cornucopia here. So double crochet now into every single stitch all the way around. You'll still have 80 stitches at the end of row 35. At the end of row 35, you'll have 80 double crochets and you'll be back around at the beginning. You can see that the seam or the difference between rows is a little taller now. We're going to do one more row of double crochet and then we're going to just create a little bit of a, a firm cuff for our cornucopia so that the mouth stays open, is a little firmer and stays open. So one more row of double crochet all the way around. We're almost done. At the end of row 36, you should have 80 stitches, two full rows of double crochet now, and there's a bit of a jog there, but that's okay. The last double crochet you work should be pretty much in alignment with the first one in that first row of double crochet you did. Um, and then you're just going to slip stitch to join that row. So there'll be a little bit of a jog, but don't worry, it's going to disappear, because now we're going to do a kind of a neat little edge finish. So we're going to chain one. So after you've slip stitched, you're going to have an edge that kind of goes like this. You're going to chain one. You're going to turn your cornucopia so that we would be working back the other direction. We will be working through the tops of the stitches of our last row, but we're also going to be working through the bottom of each of those double crochet from the first row of double crochet we made. We're going to take that last row, so you can see there's, we're looking at it upside down now. Here's the last row of double crochet. There's the first row of double crochet. We're going to fold the first or the last row on top of the first row so that the tops of the last row of stitches meet up with the bottoms of the first row. You're going to place your hook back through the top of the last stitch and through the bottom, so all the way through the bottom to the inside of your basket. So through the bottom of a stitch from the first row of double crochet, take your yarn, grab both, make sure you're still using both, grab both and just very carefully pull it back through the basket and up through that stitch. So your surface slip stitching or surface chaining. Pull it tight, 
And now your yarn is going to stay on the inside of your basket for the duration of this row. So your next stitch, you find the next stitch of your last double crochet row. Poke it through, if you have to kind of peel it back, go ahead, poke it through the bottom of a double crochet from the first row. It might also help if you're sort of looking, you can sort of see the bottoms of your double crochet stitches on the inside of your basket too. Grab your yarn, pull it back. It might take a little getting used to. The first few stitches are always kind of awkward. And keep your slip stitches nice and tight. Find the next one, find the bottom of the next double crochet, flip it on the inside, grab the yarn, make sure you're getting both, pull it back up, and surface chain. Let's do one more. Top of the last stitch, through the bottom of the stitch opposite it, grab your yarn, Pull it back up through the basket and through that slip stitch. Try to make sure that you've still got both your strings going and you can see this nice surface chain or surface slip stitching happening. And what that's going to do is just turn that last row of double crochet back onto the row previous. And if you keep it nice and tight, it will create a nice sort of stiff opening and a pretty little edge for your basket. So go ahead, work your way around, nice and easy, no need to rush. Keep those surface slip stitches nice and tight, and I will see you back at the beginning. At the end of your surface slip stitching row, or row 37, you're going to put your hook through the first stitch that you made, or the first sort of slip stitch, the edge of that first double crochet, or last double crochet, whatever you have sort of still sitting there. Just push your hook all the way through. Do one final slip stitch. That will sort of even off that edge. And then you can trim your yarn. I don't need a whole lot of tail, but I've cut a few inches here. You're gonna pull up on your loop Push your hook up through a space in between stitches, pretty close to where those loops are. Grab those loops and pull them into the inside of your cornucopia. So you've pulled them through to the inside. Make sure you've still got both of them there. So they're through to the inside. So you've pulled up on your working loop, you've pulled your working loop through to the inside of your basket. And now you can just fasten off. So grab those tails, pull them through those loops, pull nice and tightly and that little fasten off knot will be on the inside of your basket. Now you can weave up those, or I should say thread up those tails and weave them back and forth through some of the stitches in maybe the third last row. So that would be row 35, some of the single crochets there. Just back and forth, weave them in until they completely disappear and you know they're not going to come out. Once you're done weaving in your tails, you can now decide what part of your cornucopia you want to sort of be the top, and then you can bend the, to the tail of it, or the end of the horn, so to speak, up into a slightly curved shape. And you could do that just by sort of pulling and bending, pulling and bending. That's why it help it's helpful if you have nice tight stitches, because it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility later on. Then you can sort of form the front and you're all ready to display it on your table stuffed full of food. <laughs> and there you go, a cornucopia, just the perfect size for the center of your table. We hope you enjoyed stitching this up along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week. Bye everybody. Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.